We have two interviews before us. We will talk to Johan Wallin, who is compliance officer at the Swedish Gambling Authority. And we will talk to Stefan Bertilsson, who is quality manager at IKEA Test Lab in Elmhult, Småland. Accreditation is mandatory for one of the areas and voluntary for the other. Which pros and cons do they experience? Welcome to this part two, where we will explore the value of accreditation from a user perspective. We turn to the Gambling Authority first. Welcome, Johan Wallin. Johan has a long history within the organization. He has worked for the authority since 1997. Today, he is compliance officer. His daily job is to audit applications and reports from gambling companies and operators who wants to enter the Swedish market. So, Johan, we have listeners from all around the world. Could you please describe what the Swedish gambling market looks like? The Swedish gambling market looks like this. Since 2019, have the gambling market in Sweden open to an international market. It means that we have a lot of international game gambling companies in the market acting under a new gambling act. The act's focus are three different areas. Commercial online gambling, state-owned gambling, and gambling for purpose for public interest. That's the most important part of the act. Okay, thank you. Uh, could you please describe the Gambling Authority's role? What type of or organization are you? And what's your purpose on the Swedish gambling market? We are uh, authorities. So, so we are state-owned, of course. Uh, we are authority to give license to the companies who can fulfill the demands in the, act, in, the, in the Gambling Act. We also supervise the business that have been given a license. As a gambler in Sweden, you should be aware of that the market is reliable and take responsibility, especially according to responsible gambling. That's the purpose of the act. New legislation came into force uh, in 2019. The use of, accre uh, of accreditation is linked to that new legislation. Uh, could you describe why accreditation came in, in on use on the gambling market at this point? The gambling business is not harmonized in the EU. Every country have their own technical standards. When Sweden open up to an international market, it wouldn't be possible to continue work as we did before. Now we have international companies that's used to work with accreditation. Accreditation is necessary both for a gambling authority because of the reduce of the cost for the authority. It also makes it simpler for the gambling company that can test for many gambling markets at the same time by, by contacting a credit body. It's a win-win situation both for the authority and for the gambling in business. Could you tell us a little bit about the background? Which tool was used before 2019 and why the change really? Before the gambling authority worked with some what called type approval, that means that every system that a gambling company was using was supervised by authority and every drawing equipment was tested by us. It was a lot of time that we spent on that. We also made code reviewing on important code that we outsourced to external companies. Before that, we e copy of every transaction was made by the state-owned companies. It means that if a player plays a bet uh, at the state-owned company, the bet was spared in their system, and after that, it was sent to our system. When the market opened up, it would have been impossible to maintain that kind of a system. Okay, so what kind of challenge uh, did the Swedish government want to solve by the change then? Before, we had a huge amount of gambling companies that provide Swedish market with internet gambling without a gambling license. Before, they, they, only had a, they couldn't have a license. So now when it opened up, they could have a license. The new act makes it possible for them to act legally. Today is the number of games provided from Swedish from a Swedish license is about 85% of the whole gambling market in Sweden. The responsible gam gambling was a big part of the new legislation. With a national tool that called spelpost.se, can the gambler who want to take part 
take part of the gambling business, who don't want to take part of the gambling business, ban themselves from gambling. As we speak, there are 57,000 Swedish persons who have banned them from gambling. The purpose was also to ban gambling companies that not have a license in Sweden. We are hunting the 15 missing persons. Okay. So what's your experience of, of accreditation so far? Any pros and cons, strengths or weakness? Yeah, it's always difficult to understand the new market. From an accredited body point of view, some problems are about what the accredited body can do, what kind of report they can do. We are asking reports during information security, change management, r and reports, and game reports for certain games. And uh, that's only as, as some examples. From the license point of view, they have, uh, they is to adapt a new system. The licensee has different experience to contact the accredited body. The companies in Sweden who were working behind the old act was not used to contact the accredited body at all. And from the gaming authorities' point of view, a lot of new companies and new legislations. Personally, I find it's very difficult to find the essence in every report because I read lots of reports. Uh, the strengths of the system, this, this, this lower the cost for the authority. And all testing is done by the protocol, by a credit body. That means that we, we, we understand it better and we do it in the same way all the time. The weakness of the system, if I, it's difficult for small public organizations to find polite accredited bodies because they are not so used to have con the accredited bodies is normally international, and if you're a local business, it's very difficult for them to start to speak mm. English and things, things like that. Okay. It's also easy that the cost for the license grows because of the low experience to talk to accred accredited bodies. If a licensee have poor knowledge of how the order test is easy, that the costs going high or getting high or huge. Okay. So, is there anything from the old process from 2019 that you missed today? Yeah, we understand the problem for the small gambling business. It's the small gambling business mostly local bingo in small communities. But as we speak, we work to make the demands easier for the small gaming business, they who are selling selling in small areas with low profit to organization and have low prices for the players. The new system is here, and I think this is a road is a way of no return, really. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So, in your opinion, is the system working? Are you where you want to be with the accreditation system? Uh, it's too close to declare if the system is working or not. The act will be, will be revived by other authorities. In the system, we demand that the licensees upgrade the reporting every year, but without to send in the reports to us. This autumn, we make a supervision from some of the licensees if they have made an upgrade of the reporting. Another point of view is that the government have made some adjustments to the law that have forced the licensee to minimum the spend for each player in a week. This, according to the Arise, is online gambling. The Arise in online gambling from the Convoy 19 situation. They have forced some of the licensee to let the accreditation body make another review of the report. But again, I think the system will be permanent and it will not change again. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you, if you could wish, how would you like the accreditation system to evolve? We need some changes in the law to make it possible to have the business to business license. And then that will reduce some costs for the licensee, licensee who use that. I also noticed that the changing is in the way to, that a credit body can change their objectives with that will make the accreditation producer Producer, producer, easier for an accredited body. So, okay, f uh, finally then, uh, which value would you say that accreditation adds to the Swedish gambling market today? Yeah, uh, I, then I think I repeat that I already said, it's, it's lower the cost for the authority, mm -hmm. and the, the testing is done by the protocol by accredited bodies. They're doing the same way and under accreditation. That's the main plus, okay. I think. Yeah. Thank you very much, Johan. Great, thanks. We now turn to Stefan Bertilsson, a quality manager at IKEA Test Lab in Småland. Uh, Stefan has a background from NIBE with quality work, 
Nive is a Swedish company selling indoor climate systems for private homes. Stefan has been quality manager at IKEA Test Lab since 2012. And the test lab, as mentioned, is located in Elmhult, which is close to the its neighbor to the headquarters of IKEA. Welcome, Stefan. Thank you very much. Thank you. And it's also thank you for uh, for us to participate in this. It was uh, hopefully give you all uh, good information on what we are doing here in Elmhult. Yes, it's great. We are really pleased to have you. Uh, IKEA as a brand is uh, very famous. Uh, I think it's fair to say that everyone knows uh, that IKEA sells furniture, if one <coughs> puts it very simply. But I think it's also fair to say that the test, lab, the test labs are not as well known. Uh, could you please tell us a bit about the labs? I know you have two, uh, one in Elmhult, where you are quality manager, and one in Shanghai, China. So please tell us a bit about them. Yes, IKEA, they uh, have two labs, their own two lab sites, and one is located here in Elmul, the other one is in Shanghai. Uh, the lab here in Elmul, we are very close to the product development, uh, so we are combined as a development test laboratory, and also that we are supporting of uh, uh, the material and surface and all the new we things that we use on our products. That is what we are test here. And then our test lab in Shanghai, it's named IKEA Test and Consulting uh, Services in Shanghai, has the focus on production verification. So products are sent from our supplier to the laboratory in Shanghai to verify the production of our products. Great, I see. So they have a bit of different roles then. We will focus on uh, the lab in, in Elmhult today, obviously. Yeah. So uh, which role would you say the lab in, in Elmhult plays for IKEA? That's a very important role because we are in the beginning of uh, everything here uh, that we secure our products so they are safe for our customer to use. Um, but then our laboratory in Shanghai, they secure our products uh, in, in the production phase. So both lab is very, very important for IKEA. Yes. Uh, you just mentioned uh, safety. Would you say that you focus on, on quality or is it safety? On both. We focus on both. And that's a very big focus for IKEA. That is uh, very important for us as at the lab uh, to uh, have good quality and safe products for our customer. We are in direct support to product development to secure safe and healthy products and through testing and simulation, verify construction, dimensioning and choice of correct material for different markets. Could you tell us a little bit more about there, what, what you test? I've actually seen a, a videotape uh, which is shown on, on YouTube on what you do. It's very like you open and close doors a million times and you scratch things over surfaces. Could you tell us what, what kind of data is it that you collect? Uh, we select uh, all data more or less uh, on different materials. Uh, the behavior, the formability, and lots of other things. Uh, all this data we can use for simulation and calculation. Uh, we also collect data on how products perform under the test. Uh, we have uh, the mechanical testing here that uh, we try to simulate how our customer use our product. And of course, we always follow the international standard, how we should perform the test. And then IKEA have higher requirement than we have in the standard and then we have to follow that also. Right and the labs are accredited to ISO 17025. Uh, could you tell us why did IKEA decide to take this step? Yeah, it's, uh, it's very important for, uh, for the laboratory to have a certificate that uh, we are approved as the laboratory that we are doing in correct way we have an organization that we do, we're working 
according to the international standard. We, uh, it, it's a, I think it's a, a, a trust for our customer to have an accredited uh, um, laboratory. When did the accreditation become effective? As soon it was implemented and it was a, a, a tool for our, our employees uh, that we can use in our daily work. Then it be affected, uh, effective, uh, and and um, it take take little time to set up the organization and follow all the routines and that things. But when we have done that, it's it's an easy work because that's a normal behavior every day. And and when was this in time? Uh, I think the first one, uh, 1996. And. And you started working there as quality manager in 2012. Is it possible for you to say what difference has the accreditation made for the test labs? Uh, accreditation for companies is very important. I said it before also. They give us as a laboratory a certificate and trust and evidence as a laboratory to our customer. Uh, we had it well organized and then we have uh, uh, authorities here every 60 months to check that we are doing in in correct way and it's very good to have them here because then we can have a lot of improvement we may we need to do and a uh, lot of discussions around a lot of routines and a lot of our processes how we are doing it so you find uh, there is a development there in, in the discussions <clears throat> on your process yes. yeah that's okay. also my input to uh, to Sverak to be more a support function to the company to help us with um, to do in correct way. Of course, they are already doing that, but it's very important that they do that because it can be uh, a miss in how we read our standards, how we do the imp uh, in interpretation of the standard. So, be a good support is very useful for us. So is that what you find is missing in, in this uh, process? Or would you like to add something? Uh, I mean, we have a very good uh, connection with uh, the auditors who come to IKEA. And um, uh, yeah, we can, the situation we have this year when we have the audit here was a new thing for us, but I see it's very, very good to use more movies to show uh, them how we do the test. And uh, I think that can be maybe the future for Sverak also to do it in more simple way, because that reduced the cost for both of us. Yes, so the pandemic had that positive impact on, on your process. Yeah, that's that also. Yeah, absolutely. Great, I just have another question which came in from the audience. Uh, yeah. So. How do the quality infrastructure of the two labs interact? Um, the, the, the quality is, yeah, we, we say that we, we, are, we secure all the product from the beginning. In, in the beginning phase, before we start the production, we secure it and it's approved by us then to start the production. And then it's the same for for our other labs in Shanghai, they secure the production, so we don't have uh, bad products in uh, in uh, our stores. And yep. uh, together, we work very close together with a lot of uh, information and cooperation between us. So different parts of the process then? Absolutely, in the beginning and in the end. Great. Thank you, Stefan. We will uh, bring in Johan Wallin from the Swedish uh, Gambling Authority again and please stay Stefan so we can just make a short summary together uh, on the pros and cons of accreditation yep. for the yep. both of you. So if you just sit tight there. Okay, I will do that. Great. And meanwhile, yeah, perfect. There we have the both of you. Welcome back Johan. Thank you. 
So to summarize, if the both of you could, and I will start with you, you one, uh, if you could say in one or two sentences, just what do you find is the value of accreditation from your perspective, please? To maintain the Swedish Gambling Act purpose in technical demands, it's absolutely necessary that the gambling companies and subcontractors directly can contact an accredited body who have correct accreditation. Uh, it had been impossible to make all that work that we have accredited bodies to do by ourselves in a cost-effective way. So, for our point of view, we need uh, more accredited bodies, I think. <laughs> Great, thanks. <laughs> and over to you, Stefan. What do you find is the most valuable thing in the accreditation process from your point of view? Uh, it's, uh, it's for us, it's a... Uh, Many things it mean for us to have the to be a accredited test laboratory. It gives us a, a good cooperation with other laboratories. We have a, a steering uh, tool for us to be a good uh, good laboratory, working according to international standards. And then it's a, a proof that uh, we have a good organization and and a good laboratory. Great. I would just yeah. add, add one thing that IKEA test laboratories, they, they look, the site in uh, Shanghai and in Elmwood is not the only laboratories IKEA have. We have over 100 uh, approved laboratories to support the production. Thanks. That's a good clarification. Thank you. Yeah. And just a final question then, uh, you both mentioned it, but in short, what kind of development would you like to see from your perspective within accreditation for the future? I can start with you, Stefan, please. Um, yeah, it's the, to make it a little more simple. When we have uh, new methods, to, to uh, we want to have uh, accredited. Use movies. And then, of course, uh, uh, the costs, reduce the cost. Yeah, so simplification, communication and cost. Yeah. Then I go to you, Juan. What kind of development would you like to see from your perspective, please? I'm not in the details how you can refine the accreditation, but I know some points you can help the gaming business. It, we can change the law to perform a business to business license. It's something that we can uh, be rising to the law. That's something that we have rising to the lawmaker. But uh, during this uh, presentation, I also can uh, ask Stefan if he maybe can apply for accreditation for the gambling <laughs> equipment. Uh, it would be a huge impact for small lotteries in Sweden, I think. What do you think about that, Stefan? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. So the two of you, you can talk afterwards. We are looking forward to that, following that if discussion. You're buying it, yeah, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, both of you.